70 years ago, Spain was in the grip of civil war. Army units supported by the fascists were in revolt against the elected government. As the fighting spread, millions became homeless. Among them, many thousands of children. There was a committee calling for volunteers. They wanted people to drive trucks, medical supplies to Madrid. There are a lot of volunteers from England and the US, Australia. That's where I met Esme, in Madrid. We had all these children coming in from the north, refugees from the fighting. They'd been wandering the streets, sleeping rough, living off scraps. I had over a hundred I was trying to get to the coast, which was a bit safer. And I met Eric. I think he'd come from Valencia with medical supplies, in a bus. She was from the Isle of Wight, the bus, donated by well-wishers. Esme was from Australia. I came from Sydney, Australia. I was a member of the party. She was a member of the Communist Party, a woman of strong convictions. I think what got me was... Hitler was in power in Germany, and Mussolini in Italy. I mean, the whole of Europe looked like it was going fascist. And Spain was the battleground. Spain was going to be where we stopped them. No pasarán. They shall not pass. But the Germans were sending planes and the Italians were sending tanks. Britain and France were neutral. They sent buses from the Isle of Wight. And men like Eric. But he did have a bus. So we drove to the coast. I think that's when we met John Langdon Davies on the road to Valencia. I couldn't see the Spanish tragedy purely as a political affair on which one could take a vote. I thought one side right and the other wrong, criminally wrong. But more than that, more than that, I was obsessed with the disintegration of humanity, of human nature that comes with civil war. The greatest atrocity of all. And then there was this other bloke from America. His name was Nick Carter from New Hampshire. His father was president of the Nashua Gund and Coated Paper Company. I came to England to get married. But she had second thoughts a week before the wedding. So I kicked around Europe for a while, and then I... They were calling for volunteers to drive trucks, so I came to Spain. He drove a truck from Barcelona to Madrid and took refugees the other way. But I think when we met, he was on his way back to England for the coronation of King George VI. His father had been invited as a personal guest of the king. There were over a million refugees crammed into one small strip of coastline. And uh, hundreds of thousands of them were orphans, with no shelter, no bedding, very little food or water. They were either left on the streets or herded into vast camps. And the war was getting closer and closer. What we needed was a plan. We had the germ of an idea, that was all. I said, let's talk it over with the Duchess. Catherine Marjorie Stuart Murray, Duchess of Athol. They called her the Red Duchess, but actually she was a Conservative. She was strongly opposed to Britain's policy in Spain, that is, of non-intervention. So in April 1937, she came over to see how things were on the ground. We told her we had a plan, at least the beginning of a plan. We wanted to establish colonies for the children the refugee children, away from the big cities. Each child would have a sponsor, in England initially, but it wouldn't just be a case of providing money. There'd be a personal relationship between sponsor and child. She liked it. When she went back to London, she held a press conference to announce the formation of the Foster Parents Plan for Children in Spain. In the summer of 1937, things were going very badly for the government forces. There was a battle going on for Santander, in the Basque Country. And there was a feeling that if the government lost Santander, they'd lost the war. We were in this village in the hills, north of the city. It was a collecting point for refugees, and many of them were children. There was one. He, he was about six. He had a sign round his neck. It said, This, this is, is Jose. Jose. I am his father. I am his father. When Santander falls, I shall be shot. For my sake, please take care of my child. We'd raised enough money for two children's colonies in Catalonia, and they'd asked me to run one of them, in the mountains near the French border. 
It was a chateau owned by some rich Catalans and confiscated by the government. It was a real, a gloomy kind of monster of a building, but Nick and the kids, they did wonders with it. They painted it, they had pictures on the walls, photographs, they even had shows in the theatre. Nick worked wonders. He had a real nose for a bargain. He'd work the markets, always finding the cheapest stuff. In one place, he found 12 tons of potatoes, still in the ground. John came to visit and to write a report, and the, the children, they all, they all knew what he was there for, and they all crowded around asking about the sponsors in England. Some of them had letters. We had a girl from Madrid, Enriqueta, who translated every letter sent by the sponsors, and she gave the type translation to the children. They used to read the letters aloud to each other. I spoke to one boy, a boy of 12. He was very anxious to hear from his sponsor. I asked him, I said, haven't you had anything from him? And he said, yes, yes, he sent me a present, but what I want is a letter. And they're all shouting, yes, yes, we want letters so we know about our foster parents. Photographs and postcards were, well, the only word is, they were cherished. The war went on and the children kept coming. We needed more sponsors. The Duchess couldn't find them fast enough. So John came up with a new idea. I'd been booked to do a lecture tour in the States. I suggested Eric come with me to find new sponsors and raise more money. And Nick decided to come too. He said his father had some rich connections and he could be more use there than in Spain. I met a crowd of Dad's friends at the Exchange Club in Boston. They said, well, we got problems of our own. It was just after the Depression, not a good time to ask for money. I said, look, things might be bad in America, but kids aren't being mown down by machine guns. They're, they're not starving. They had a friend. That's what really excited them. The idea that they had a real friend in another country who cared about them. I think this was what really moved the people in America. The, the idea of a personal relationship. I think this was when it really began to take off. The war was over. The fascists had won. We decided we had to get the children out. We led them across the border into France. All 300 of them. A long crocodile like a school outing. Climbing over the Pyrenees. So that's how it began. They were the first. Today, Plan International works with children and their families and communities in more than 60 countries around the world. It reaches over 11 million people. But they were the first. <laughs>